Today I'm just going to share with you what I think about salary jobs versus commission heavy roles. When I was young, starting out in life, everybody told me that I needed a job that would pay X dollars either an hour or a year. And it was assumed that I would fall into a salary heavy job like a software engineer or a doctor or a lawyer. You know, these are jobs where you get a salary from your employer and then they will then, you know, give you this yearly monthly amount and that would be considered stable. So I got into the workforce when I was in high school. Our high school had a connection with a local bank and my first experience in the white collar world was data entry. And so data entry, you get these wires that the bank gets and there's a bunch of numbers and you like type it into this system and then it goes off into the ether and that's that. And I just remember even at such a young impressionable age of being, I think it was 14 at the time, and I did this for two years in a row, two summers. I just remember really enjoying my colleagues thinking they were very nice people, but just looking around and being like, how much money did these people actually earn? And I think it was probably like forty to fifty thousand dollars, which I thought, you know, that's not a lot of money. Not only that, I was like, this job is concerningly easy. Like it's too easy. <laughs> like I don't see why a robot can't do this job. And the sad thing is, I was right. Even at that young age, I was correct because in the future, those jobs were outsourced either to foreign countries or they were legit automated. Anyways, so when I was younger, I was just thinking like. A, this job kind of sucks as well. Like, I don't really enjoy it. It's not really fun. Like, it's, it's not fun at all. Like, I'm literally just typing stuff into a, I, I, so at a very young age, I thought to myself, is this what life is really like? So the funny thing about all these internships that I had in high school and eventually college was that it taught me, man, these jobs really suck. Like, I don't really want these jobs at all. Like, even if I got a yearly salary, man, this would be freaking miserable. I think I would like die doing this is like being alive while dead, right? Your brain is dead. Your job sucks. It's so boring. You're making barely enough to like cover your gas money and your rent. I, I, I was just like, this can't be it. So from a very young age, I was like, Ooh, I don't really like this salary life. It's pretty damn boring. And so as I got older, what I realized was, and I started reading all these books about success. I start realizing that all these people who are successful, who seem to love life and have a big personality, they're in sales, all right? They're in sales jobs, which means they're on a either zero base or on a low base, but they're creating their wealth and they're loving it and they're doing it through their own means, which I thought, wow, this is very interesting. So when I found recruitment, recruitment hit me up like, as in the industry, somebody who was an internal recruiter from the recruitment agency that I eventually started working at, he called me up and he was like, Hey, you know, you applied to one of our jobs because at this point I was like, well, so I had no idea what to do. I was like 22 and I was like desperate to move out of Boston. And I was like, I don't want to do this finance thing, but I don't know what else I can do. Right. Other than just waitressing or bartending where, yeah, it's fun and I'm making cash money, which is great. Or I'm selling stuff on eBay or I'm doing all these side hustle money. That's good. But like, I want to make like six figures. I don't want to be selling wallets to get six figures. That's really hard. I'd rather, you know, make money at a profession and, and ideally earn a lot of money. So randomly the recruitment firm that eventually hired me called me and was like, Hey, you applied to one of our jobs, but you are not a fit for the finance career. <laughs> Your background is like waitressing, like selling stuff on eBay, like, you know, managing a restaurant, like, ugh. I don't think that's what JP Morgan's looking for. You're not going to qualify for like a basic ass job, but you might qualify for our job of being an actual headhunter because our job is sales. It's all about connecting with people and building relationships and having commercial acumen, selling jobs to candidates and then selling candidates to companies. And I was like, that sounds like a scam. I never heard of that. Because at this point, sales jobs are largely scammy, 
right? Other than like selling software products, which again, I was like, I don't want to sell a software product. This is so boring. Like, I don't want to go around doing software demos. Like, oh my God, this is so exciting. I'm selling XYZ software, whoop de doo I didn't want to do that either. I was not interested in enterprise sales or product sales really because I've done it and it wasn't very interesting. So I was like, that's that sounds like a scam. Like who would pay for that? That's weird. But once I got to the job, and I started, you know, doing recruitment. I was like, holy cow, this is a legit career. This is like a legit sales job because these companies, their HR teams and their internal recruiters really cannot find these candidates. And they really need headhunters to come in and solve this gap. And the problem with the US education system is that it's not pump pumping out enough qualified talent Right. If we don't look at external hires and external, you know, immigration coming in to do these STEM jobs, they're literally there's just not enough native talent, native born talent to do the work. So what happens is that there's like a 10 to 20 X demand for the existing pool of candidates. Thus, it breeds a need for a specialist, a headhunter to come in to solve this missing gap. And that's what happens in every single STEM career. There's just not enough people to go around. So you need professional agents, professional people who understand how to move talent. This is a highly specialized sales skill. And these people get paid a crap ton of money. And I mean a crap ton. So I was paid 30,000 to 50,000. We're paid on a percentage off of the salary. So if I'm doing a salary of 150 at 20%, 20% is like the bare minimum a good recruiter would charge. So 20% is like at the minimum what you would expect. And you would only give that to like highly desirable accounts on maybe the first hire, right? So contract negotiations, that's a whole nother thing. But my point is worst case scenario, you're getting 20% off of their salary and you really shouldn't be doing deals at under 100 grand like if you work for a recruiting agency you need to be doing deals at 100 plus or else how are you going to commission right so recruiting is all about math so i started doing deals at 30 to 40k each so i made my company three hundred thirty thousand dollars in the first year that i was a recruiter out of that i got to keep about eighty-seven thousand of it damn for a 23 year old that's not so bad i'm talking back in 2011 so the salaries were not as inflated as they are today. Not only that, the tools that recruiters have today, like social media, like just all of these technology tools to connect with our network, it's so exciting, right? So in my second year of recruiting, I built over $500,000 for my company and I got to keep 130,000 of that. Now bear in mind, I'm doing the client side and the candidate side. Most recruitment agencies would actually pay you 50%. So if I was at the, at the right recruitment business, I probably could have made closer to two to $300,000 in my first, in my second year of recruiting. In my first year of recruiting, I would have probably made closer to 120 to 150. But because I worked at a large recruitment agency, my um, commission cuts were much lower than what was expected. In my third year of recruiting, I billed over 740,000. I got to keep 215 of that. Again, if I was working at another recruiting firm, probably would have made closer to 300 to 350 of that, maybe even more, 400, right? Because once you start billing over half a million, your firm really starts to give you more because they're like, we don't want to lose this person. This person is just like printing money for us. So can you believe it? There's a sales job out there that no one knows anything about. And there's a ton of 20 year olds over there making 100, 200, 300, 400 thousand dollars a year. Well, that's recruitment. It's not rocket science, but it's hard. It's a really hard job because you have to be exceptionally detail oriented, charismatic, people oriented to do this role because it's about customer service and it's also about business. It's about client services. So if you're interested to learn more about recruitment as a sales career, check out recruiterprep.com. That's a course that I put together with my colleague, Grace. We started this company, recruiterprep.com, to teach you what recruitment is all about. And also DG Recruit, if you're a recruiter who knows that you're not getting paid what you should be paid, let's talk today because I wanna help you get the commission rates that you deserve. And then lastly, if you are scared of going into a sales job, all I can say is that you're probably not cut out for it then because you have to have a lot of self-belief, self-confidence, and also be a bit of a contrarian. If you wanna go that traditional route, that's what most people do. 
They have a job job, even people in recruitment, they can't handle this and they go internal and become an HR person. But that's not what we do. We're salespeople. As salespeople, we love what we do, we enjoy our lives, but we are confident. We know that we're capable of achieving what we want to achieve. So I don't know what the answer is for you, but these are just some nuggets of thought and wisdom that perhaps you can think about as you craft your own career strategy. But I have to tell you, there's a lot more to life than just that stupid stuff that my parents shoved out my throat, that society shoved out my throat. Same thing. When I became a recruiter, nobody was like, good idea. This is wonderful. Everyone's like, what an idiot. Why would you do that? That's such a stupid idea. You get 35K base. Ugh. Most people don't even want to consider that, but then they're not going to get the back end income that I got at such a fast pace. So again, this is the difference between a traditional route and a slightly less traditional route, more risk, more reward. And that's sort of how life works. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Make sure to follow my channel and be notified of all of my new videos. Anything that you love me to talk about, please do let me know. I'd love to help you get the answers you need as you build your career.